Oh my goodness, hello! Welcome back, everybody. Today, I thought that I would read you The Secret Garden. So, this version of The Secret Garden is actually based off of a novel originally by Fran Francis Hodgson Burnett. I think the illustrations in this book are beautiful, and I'm so excited to show you. So, this version of The Secret Garden is adapted by Calista Brill based on the novel by Frances Burnett Hodgson, and it's illustrated by Adelina Lirius. Once upon a time, a walled garden bloomed, bloomed under the summer skies in the north of England, but it was locked up and left alone. And it stayed alone for many years until Mary was an unhappy little girl with an unhappy little face. She was going to live in a new home where she expected to be very unhappy indeed. Misselthwaite Manor was a big old stone house with 100 rooms. Most of them were shut up. It was a cold and lonely place full of secrets. Mary arrived on a winter night when the wind was howling across the moor and the rain was pouring down. In the morning, Mary woke up alone. The house was silent around her. At first, Mary hated Misselthwaite Manor. She hated the cold, echoing hallways. She hated the barren, scrubby moor. She even hated the nice hot breakfast that Martha brought, Martha the maid brought to her room. One morning, Mary took her skipping rope and went out to explore. The house had many gardens, but they were mostly brown and bare in winter. So soon, she met an old gardener named Ben. I'll tell you a secret, he said. Mary listened eagerly, and Ben told her about a hidden garden at Misselthwaite Manor. Tucked away somewhere in the walls and hedges, locked up tight. Mary liked having a secret. Skip, 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 went Mary around the gardens. Skip, skip. Oh, hello, said Mary to the robin. His cheerful red breast was the only color she could see on that cold gray day. He's made his mind up to be friends with you, said Ben. Mary liked having a friend. Before long, Mary found that she even liked the cold, wet air that blew in off the moor in the late winter. Day by day, Mary's thin, pale face got rounder and pinker. For the first time in her life, she was hungry in the morning and sleepy at bedtime. One day, the rain was too heavy for Mary to play outside. So she decided to explore the big old sad house. Up hallways and downstairs she went, turning corner after corner wandering in and out of dusty rooms. She never saw anyone, but she heard someone, someone crying. Who was it? Mary asked Martha that night. Just your imagination, said Martha. The days grew longer and brighter as winter started to fade. Mary found that she could now skip all the way around the gardens without stopping even once. 98, 99, 100. Mary counted as she skipped. She rested by a wall covered in ivy and she thought about the secret garden locked up and left alone. Chirp, cried the robin, pecking at the dirt. Something gleamed and glittered. A key. So pretty, so many things that you can see. The garden had been alone for a long time. Brown, scratchy rose bushes climbed trees and trailed from branch to branch. Years of fallen leaves covered the ground like a gray blanket. 
Was the garden dead or just sleeping? Something was alive. Something was struggling to reach the light and greet spring. Mary took a deep breath and thought hard. She loved the garden already and more than anything, she wanted it to stay a secret. But she needed help. I need some advice, Mary told Martha. About a little garden. She did not say which one. You'll be wanting Dickon, Martha said. Her brother knew everything about plants and animals. So Martha sent for him. And the moment Mary met Dickon, she knew that she could trust him with any secret. With Dickon's help, Mary learned how to care for the garden. And as the spring came on, the garden burst to life. Misselthwaite Manor was Misselthwaite Manor had one other secret. His name was Colin, and he was sick and sad, angry and weak. It was Colin who had been crying that day, and it was Colin's crying that reached Mary's ears and brought her to him one stormy spring night. Are you a ghost? He asked her. Are you? said Mary. Colin's father was the master of Misselthwaite Manor, but he was never home. Colin couldn't walk, and he hated it when people felt sorry for him. So he hid in his room and he never went out. I don't feel sorry for you, Mary told Colin. She thought he was a bit like the garden. He'd been locked up and left alone for too long. Dickon had known how to help the garden. Maybe he would know how to help Colin. So Mary brought Dickon to visit, and Dickon brought his animals. What do you need, Dickon told Colin, is some fresh air. The robin had been Mary's first friend, but now she had two others. Mary, Dickon, and Colin worked in the secret garden every day, and every day more flowers appeared. Delphiniums, foxgloves, and irises lined the walls. It's like magic, Mary said, and she felt a little foolish saying it out loud. But Dickon nodded, and so did Colin. It is magic, said Colin. Day by day, the magic of the garden and the spring air and the bird song and the work of digging and watering made Colin strong and cheerful. It made Mary happy just looking at him. And on the day that the roses finally burst into bloom, Colin walked. The end. Thank you so much for joining me. Have a great day.